Hello, my name is April Walker and welcome to the Yoga Ranger Studio and welcome to your practice. Today we're focusing on an area that I know has actually been a personal struggle for me and for a large number of people I know, particularly women and a lot of yogis. So I'm just going to say this out there. There are ways to injure yourself in yoga and this is probably the second most predominant one, the first being shoulders. But we're talking today about your SI joint. So if you've heard this phrase kind of thrown around, sacroiliac joint, SI joint, SI, and didn't know exactly what was going on, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a lowdown. So turning myself around, I'm gonna show you where this actually is. So your sacrum is toward the base of your spine and it's the top of your pelvis. It's a kind of a curved, roundy section. And on either side of that is a little joint space. And this joint space kind of looks like if you've ever done uh, antiquing tongue and groove, it's a little bit of kind of grooving together. And so these kind of slip into each other in poses in which you are twisting particularly, and sometimes in poses in which you are have one leg going one direction and the other going another this would put a lot of pressure and compression on that SI joint, which is not particularly unhealthy. It is healthy to keep that joint mobile and movable, and that is what it's meant sort of to do. But with overstretching, overexertion, not allowing the hips to twist with the body. So we've talked a lot about twisting through the hips or twisting stable. So you might've been told somewhere in one of your classes to keep your hips perfectly stable when you're doing a twist. Um, I don't recommend that because I've had an SI injury, so I kind of know that allowing the hips a little bit of space to, to move and to twist with that twist will help prevent jamming and overstretching that space. Um, but this is an area where if you have been injured and you are kind of struggling to recover from that, or you are working with a flare up of it because it kind of, you can't really cure it, it doesn't really go away, it just continues to kind of flare up whenever you do something maybe you shouldn't like overstretching, um, or hormones. So a couple of things that make this SI joint bump out would be hormones, relaxin from pregnancies and or hormones uh, each month with your cycle actually make the space a little looser like it makes all the joints and overextending during that period of time in an exercise or in an injury or something happening in your life will make that a little bit more damaged, it will also inflame and just get inflamed and painful. So if you have had some lower back pain down into the pelvis on one side, it's usually just one side, and it's kind of a dull throbbing pain, this might be something to bring to your physical therapist or your doctor as a possible cause of that discomfort. Working with it today, we're gonna to try to keep really stable. My suggestion is that for long term is that you rest it first when you're having a flare up and be really thoughtful about the positions you're taking. Really be really kind to your body and let that inflammation go down before you start to work with it. But there are physical therapists who will help you stabilize that joint area and overall teach you some movements that will work for your body in particular. So look for a good occupational therapist or a physical therapist who would work with that. So we don't need any props. If you'd like a blanket underneath, you surely can use that, but you don't have to have it. And we're gonna jump right in. We're gonna start with child's pose, but I often cue child's pose with knees wide apart. This is gonna add a little compression to that space. So what we wanna do is keep them a little closer together. Shifting back, you can stack your uh, hands on top of one another or on fists and rest your forehead on there, or you can use a bolster underneath or a block if you want to. But keeping the knees about hip distance apart and just letting that lower back lengthen and open, breathing into this space. So focusing your awareness and your attention on this space, right top of the pelvis and base of the spine. I often advise people who have potentially SI issues or some pain back there to kind of journal what they're doing or when they feel it flare up. So if they do certain practices or certain poses and they feel it, that might be a pose that needs to be re-engineered for your body. No, not every pose has a specific alignment that works for every single body. 
and know that you might have to rework a pose. For me, Trikonasana, triangle pose, was the pose that caused me the most pain, so I had to completely re-engineer that pose to work for my body. Breathing into the space. Say hello to Lucy. Lucy. If you ignore her, she gets angry. I try not to ignore her too much. If over time you feel like you can bring your forehead to the floor, you can, or rest it on the back of your hands, which is a little bit lower. Lucy's going to help us feel better today. Starting to lengthen your exhale, extending it out longer than your inhale. This will help you soften and sink into the parasympathetic nervous system, the rest and digest part of your system. and also possibly facilitate your healing process. Your body naturally knows how to take care of itself and heal itself. So giving it some time and some care and some breath just helps it do what it naturally does. Just one more deep breath, breathing into that back space right above the waistline and exhaling it all out. Shifting forward, if your cat will let you, onto your belly, if your other cat will let you, <laughs> into Sphinx Pose. So taking the feet about hip distance apart, bring the palms together, elbows underneath the shoulders. So if you want less bend in your back, you can take those elbows forward. If you want more bend, you would tuck them closer underneath the shoulders. And just allow your back to soften. Feeling a little bit of length through the crown of the head, letting the chest just slide forward. It just wants to automatically forward and down and letting the shoulders soften down the back. I know that for me personally, back bends actually helped my SI joint feel a little bit more comfortable. It also helped mobilize that tissue differently with more stability so that I didn't have it slip out so often. You might even find that you have SI flare ups at certain seasons. For me, it is every winter, like about January of every year. It's perhaps the cold for me or not being as mindful to warm up before my yoga practice. Letting the shoulders soften down toward the heels. Here again, bring your awareness and your breath to that space of the SI, the sacrum, the joints laying on either side. Some of the most painful positions if you already have an SI joint issue or SI issues would be in which legs are going different directions. So in triangle pose or warrior poses in which one foot is turning out or one hip is turning out and one is turning forward means you're compressing one side more than the other. 
So one is stretching and pulling at one end and one is compressing on the other. So just something to keep in mind with your practice, maybe taking a little less wide of a stance or maybe softening those poses a little bit, holding them for a little less time. Just three more deep breaths here. You can either stay here in Sphinx or you can take seal pose. So turning the hands out, thumbs facing forward, walking them forward maybe a little bit, lifting up. Here again, you're gonna fill this immediate response to kind of tighten up the glutes. You want to soften those down. Maybe take your hands further forward so there's not as much if that feels better for you or hands in further if you have a little bit more mobility. Remember in yin we're not trying to go as far as we possibly can. We're trying to go a little bit shy of that. Particularly if you have an injury and you're trying to work with that. You might want to back off a little bit further really checking in with how this feels. And if it doesn't feel good, then backing out of this pose, coming back into Sphinx. I find that sometimes injury is one of the greatest teachers in my practice, teaching me to connect more mindfully to my practice, to my movements, and sensing a little bit more about what I'm doing and how I'm doing it and where I'm going with my practice. Maybe I'm pushing a little bit too hard. Maybe I'm trying too hard. Maybe my body just isn't ready for certain poses. Maybe I need more warm up, more strength training, less flexibility, or the opposite. Let the shoulders soften. Maybe you find a little more opening in the lower back, right above that space. And bending your elbows out to the side, start to slide yourself down flat, super slow, coming out of this pose. Take your hands on top of one another and drop your forehead to the back of your hands. And gently rolling all the way over onto your back. So we're going to take stirrup pose here. So bringing the knees into the chest. Start here. Maybe you grab hold of the ankles. Take a few breaths here. So I think one of the greatest things in working with an SI injury is that if you use the wall, and the floor more. This helps stabilize that area, stabilize your joint and stabilize your movements, helping you find a little bit better alignment for your body. So if this is where you feel fine, you can stay here. If you want, you can grab hold of the bottoms of your feet on the outside or inside. Bring those knees a little bit closer together than you normally do. Simple, we'll take it very wide. You want to bring it closer and press into the hands, hands into the feet. So think about the tailbone lengthening down toward the floor. Now you could also do this in squat pose if you felt comfortable there, but I feel like the ground underneath gives me a lot of stability and comfort when I have an SI flare up. Really breathing, extending that exhale. 
Breathing into the lower back, the top of the hips. Just about three more deep breaths here. Gently releasing your feet, bring those knees together maybe circling to the left and right a few times give yourself a little lower back massage letting the feet drop wide knees together giving yourself some space across the sacrum now our next pose a little bit different here we are taking a little bit of movement in that si so Crossing right over left, we're gonna take supine shoelace. Go ahead and bring those knees into your chest. Now, if you can just grab onto your knees, just grab onto your knees. If you feel like you can go a little bit deeper, you can. But don't go, once again, as deep as you could. Back off a little bit further. Here again, using the floor as a stabilizer. Allowing yourself to soften, let gravity pull those knees towards you instead of folding forward and compressing that area. Breathing into the space, checking in with how you feel in this pose. If any of these poses you feel more pain or you feel that SI flaring up more, definitely come completely out of the pose and just rest with your knees together, feet wide, or just flat on your back. That might feel a little bit better. If you find everything feels okay and you don't feel a particular compression, you can Allow gravity to pull your knees in a little bit closer. Maybe rock your head side to side a time or two. Release the neck. I find that sometimes when something is painful, everything else starts to kind of freeze up and more things hurt. It's like a domino effect. Gently release whatever holds you have on your legs. Let them drop, unwind. Here again, return to that feet wide, knees together. Notice how you feel this. Notice how your SI joint is doing, your SI joints, I should say there are two of them. How they are doing, how they're feeling. And then we're going to switch sides, crossing left over right this time. Go ahead and bring those knees into the chest, noticing if this side is the side that you struggle more with. So if you were having that pain on one side, you may feel it when you do certain poses, you'll feel more. You may need to just on that side, adjust your pose accordingly. It may be that a little TLC for that SI joint in particular is useful here.
You're again adjusting your pose as you feel it. You feel too much here. You want to come out a little ways. You can always release and grab a little bit higher up. Or if you have more mobility and you feel okay, feel it's appropriate here, you can always reach down and grab hold of your shins or your feet. It's better not to take the feet super wide as we're dealing with the SI joint and injury. So maybe keeping them a little bit closer together and just grabbing the ankles, shins. It's a little bit better for the SI joint. Now here again, sensing that area, noticing anything that you feel here, really becoming aware of your body. So yin, I think, is one of the most wonderful practices to help you become far more aware of how your body is functioning and responding to poses and to life. Because you hold these poses longer, you can really kind of run a little body scan and feel where things are happening. Once you become aware of something, you can respond to it, change it, make modifications, accommodate it, give it some love. Still breathing into this space. So for me, this is the side that is more trouble, my left side. I can definitely feel this more on this side in that joint. If I were having a full on flare up, I would probably walk my hands a little bit higher up and let my knees drop a little bit further away from me. But I'm not having a flare up right now, so kind of middle ground. I can say that once you learn to accommodate it and adjust your poses accordingly, triangle pose no longer causes me pain. And that's really good news for me because I like that pose. <laughs> But your flare-ups, when you do have them, will be shorter duration and they will be less and less often. I have gone like a two years without any kind of flare-up, so... Go ahead and release your legs down. Walk those feet wide, drop the knees together. If you are not somebody already taking a curcumin supplement, which is basically turmeric with some pepper and ginger in it, I highly recommend investing in a daily curcumin supplement. You can take them in a little pill format. Those really help with inflammation in the joints in particular, I think for me, but overall inflammation of the body and will help a lot of those aches and pains that kind of occur help reduce that inflammation. And for me, that was actually a great additive along with modifying my practice to help release some of that and work with the SI joint. So we're gonna take a little double stack twist here. So arms out to the side, palms up. We're gonna shift our hips over to the right, way over there, right? And drop those knees over to the left. So taking a double stack twist kind of gives us a little less of that two-way compression. Here again, though, if you feel your SI does not feel good, you can prop those feet up with a bolster or block so you're not taking as deep a twist. You can take your left hand to the outside of that right leg and twist a little bit deeper if that feels okay for your lower back and your SI. By adjusting your feet, you can change where you feel a twist to. So if you take your feet further away, you might feel more in your hip and your lower back. If you tuck those feet in, it might wind a little bit further up the spine, displacing it a little higher up.
If you like, you can turn and look over your opposite shoulder for this last minute. You'll notice in my twists, if you have been with me for a while or if you haven't, that I do not stack my knees directly on top of one another. This is another result of my SI history, not forcing them to stack completely on because the minute I start to do that, I can feel my SI unhappy. So allowing that hip to drift off a little bit twists was really helped a lot of my poses. Turn to look back up at the ceiling and release that leg, come back to center. Shift those hips down the middle, drop the knees together, take a few breaths here. Notice how this feels and where this feels. Breathing into that space. I tell people I just, I'm now become a hip twister, literally and figuratively. <laughs> It's hip to be a hip twister, right? Okay. Taking our second side here. So shifting the hips over to the side. Now, the reason we do this is we're helping align the spine a little bit better. So when we pull those knees in and drop the knees over, our spine is in a little bit more straight alignment. Now, once again, this is the side that I've had some troubles with. So for me, I don't really feel like I wanna take that hand to that knee and push it a little bit further. I have a little bit of space from the floor and that's okay. You don't have to get your knees to the floor. Nobody ever said that. There are no rules for that. You could even take a blanket or a pillow or something and prop it up so you don't feel like there's too much compression on that side. Here again, I do not stack my knees on top of one another directly. I am a hip twister, so I find that's a little bit easier for me. Something to try. So all of these things work for me and I'm just offering whatever's worked so far for me, but if you find they don't work for you, you know, it's good to try different stuff. So just a few ideas. Now, if after a few breaths, you feel like maybe things are kind of opening up, you could take that hand. I'm, I'm very ginger when I try this gingerly, just kind of see where it goes. Nice deep breaths, long exhale, breathing all the way down into that space. Now I've had a lot of people say that SI is damaged mostly or hurts most from twists. I would say that's with what I call a static twist, which is what I was talking about and keeping your hip permanently stable and locked in place when you're taking a twist. A dynamic twist allows your hips to kind of go with you and is perfectly fine if you are mindful and aware of what you're doing and don't go too far. But it gives you a little bit more space, a little bit more room, a little less compression in the twist. And turn and look over the opposite way if that felt good on the other side, just for a few more breaths. Just 
Gently turning back to center, engaging your core and bringing those knees back through the middle. Here we're gonna rest for Shavasana. So taking your feet wide, knees together. Take your hands underneath your hips and just lengthen your spine out and just let it softly go into natural tilt. Tuck the shoulder blades underneath, palms out to the side or on your belly. Checking in with your body from head to toe. Focusing in particular on this sacroiliac area. Letting it settle into the floor and be supported by the floor. Letting it soften and open across the back side of the body. If it feels better to stay moving just a tiny bit, you can just gently, tiny little windshield wipers, like you're barely brushing knee against knee. Sometimes I find when I have back pain, if I stop moving completely, I notice it more. A little gentle movement helps open that area more. allow me to feel more relaxed. And that is the point here. If you have more time for Shavasana, please take as much time as you possibly can. But if this is all you have, go ahead and take your arms up overhead and stretch through your fingertips, lengthening your spine. Exhale, allow your knees to drop over and roll over to your right side. Slowly make your way up. For me, it's better not to cross my legs if I'm having an SI issue. Okay, better to take hero pose here. Dropping those hands down to the floor. Inhale, sweep the hands all the way up overhead. Open your eyes, look up at your palms. Exhale, hands to heart. Peace and namaste. Thank you so much for joining me for this practice. Just a few tips if you missed any of those because you were relaxing so well. A curcumin supplement can do a lot for helping reduce inflammation throughout the body and really an SI joint issue and knee issues and a lot of other joint issues, shoulders as well, are based on inflammation of the joint. So if you can reduce that inflammation, your pain level and your comfort level will increase dramatically. Super healthy. Curcumin supplements are turmeric, ginger, and black pepper usually. Kirkman works best with black pepper with it, and ginger is also an anti-inflammatory. Other ideas is twist from your hips. Don't keep that pelvis in perfect alignment when you're in a seated twist or a twist where you have stability there. Allow the hip to open a little bit. Let the hip go where it needs to go and give it a little bit of space. That locking that hips into space really puts a lot of compression and pull on the SI joints on either side. And also, Take some time to journal when you feel it, when, how, what poses make it worse, and maybe re-engineer those poses, re-engineer some things you're doing in your life. Reach out to a physical therapist and find out some information about poses that you can do to stabilize that space and help build more strength in it. So I hope this helped you feel a little bit better, gave you a little bit deeper understanding of your SI joint overall. Have a great day.